Okay, right. First thing for me. Um, I will take a step forward. Because the club has taken a step forward. Hey! Well, the turnout event tonight shows it to us. To see you lot here tonight means a hell of a lot. Okay. There's nothing like seeing someone from your club lifting the trophy. Uh, it's a work party today to uh, put the handrail up for the uh, walkway to the main pitch as requirements by the furlough none. As well as being home to the world's oldest and some of Europe's biggest and best football clubs, fields and stadiums across England are home to over 40,000 clubs, more than any other nation worldwide. And despite being the most popular sport in the world, far less people understand what it takes to build and maintain a football club like Wormley Rovers who reside in step six of the UK football pyramid. Well, I kind of started playing here when I was 17. Played till I was mid-30s, senior football, and then vets football till I was sort of early 50s, 52, I think. I've uh, probably spent third of my life here, I think. <laughs> According to my missus, most of my life. Yeah. A few hours, mate, a few hours. I came down to Wormley when I was uh, 29 as a player and I've been involved ever since and I've just had my 54th birthday so I'll make that 25 years. Do you know what I was thinking as I was driving along? I didn't know if the ones that poke out of front go past the cab. I was thinking what if I just go into a traffic light? I picked out the chairman role two years ago now. I'd always been involved. Um, I went from being a player to assisting with the first team, doing some coaching. Then I, I took on the, the vets team and was player manager there for about 12 years. But I felt I wanted to commit more to the chairman's role. So I packed up managing the vets and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, one of the committee um, donated it, so we cleaned it up, uh, give it a lick of paint, and it absolutely does a job for us. There was a requirement for, from the league for us to have a pay box, so pretty much getting that done today, trying to get the walkway done as well. So. I think the committee is really important, and I think the committee we've got at the moment is Brilliant. We've got Nick, who come from Chesant, is, is a great Chesant man. We are hoping the hashtag game will bring a couple of hundred supporters in, so we get a bit of income which will pay for the officials, help pay for the officials bill for the season. That's our big income day. And we can buy our grinder van, a pair of safety goggles. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got Brian Locke, brilliant man, and then our chairman, Nigel Scully, who I think has just been a revelation to the club. Hey, you're going to get up there, you've got to get right at the Don't worry about that. No, it, it's full of muck. He's, he's, um, he's no hair. I've got a scaffolding van, mate. I could do anything now. And I just think he's been a revelation for the club. It's been, it's, this is one of the best committees we've ever been on, but this is the highest we've ever been. We've had to do a lot more work. 
today um, we've got the reserves, Wormy Rovers reserves playing Sarat reserves. So I first was at Wormley when I was about six years old and really played all my youth football from that age, from the age of six all the way to under 18s at Wormley. Really all through even my senior football, I was always around Wormley even though I played for some other clubs. Um, I always kind of found myself back at Wormley. I mean I'm nearly 40 now and I've been at this club really since I was six years old. Pretty much solid. I was playing for the reserves last year. Um, and the manager um, decided to call it a day at the end of the season and then at the pre-season this season there was they were still looking for a manager. They asked me if I'd be interested and um, certainly the age I was at it was something I was looking to get into management and uh, for me no better place to, to start my senior um, management than Wormley. I've spent most of my life at the club so it made sense. Today I'm Sarah in the league alright? Yeah. We drew with them away, they're a decent side, they're on a good run, they've won three on the spin, they beat Bedman last week, um, they're going to be a decent side boys, so we're, we're going to need to be up for this, we don't want to let the season just drift away boys, because we've set some high standards this year, we need to keep that going, don't let it drift away. Despite having had a strong start to the season, Wormley's young reserve squad under Andy Chapman will face a tough test at the hands of Sarat reserves. Football for me will always be about winning. Yes, you want people to improve, but football will always be about winning. And you can't, you can't beat that feeling um, on a Saturday when you've won the game and everyone's worked hard to win the game. And equally, equally that feeling of dejection when it doesn't go your way and you lose the game is, uh, is an equally horrible feeling. Everywhere, everywhere is appalling. Embarrassing, appalling, I don't even know what word. It is shocking. People can't pass a ball, they can't control a the ball, they can't head a ball, the ball's bouncing over people's heads. One player at the back, Craig, pushing up on his own, on his own. It's a shambles. Everything is a shambles. Shocking, appalling. On a day when all we've done all season is talk about how good this team is, where this team can go, and on a day when there's no first team game and there's more people here watching, we are a shambles. Appalling. But the massive positive is it's only one nil. And it ain't like we ain't had chances to be fair. Everybody wants to run with it. There's times where we say in there, you have little games, pass it, get it back, pass it, get it back, because you're shifting them about. You're just f***ing playing into their hands all the f***ing time. Listen, some of you can have young what's been said, accept it and do something about it. Because there's so much f***ing talent in this side, you should be playing like that. Ah! Keep going boys, keep going! Run, Nils, eight, good run. Come in a minute, Nils, you get two. After a disappointing first half, Wormley came out looking stronger, coming painfully close to an equaliser on multiple occasions. Do it because we we enjoy football, we love football, but ultimately we, we want to win on a Saturday. That's that's the biggest thing. But second half definitely hundred thousand times better. But still not good enough. And beaten by a team really that I think really yeah, they're not playing.
If, if you seriously cannot take a bollock, don't play football. Don't play football. You need to do something else. The non league show. BBC Three Counties Radio. We all know that non-league football isn't just about the players and the managers, although we love speaking to them. It's also about the volunteers and those people that work tirelessly behind the scenes. The kit men, the secretaries, the groundsmen, all those crucial people. Now, shortly before the show, I spoke to Nigel Scully. He's the chairman of East Hertfordshire Club, Wormley Rovers. And Wormley, they play at Step 6 in the Eastern Counties Division 1 South. We call ourselves a community-run club. Obviously, we have Wormley youth coming through. Um, we have lots of lots of young players playing at the club. We are surrounded by bigger clubs um, and clubs that have budgets to play with. We, we, we don't get involved in that. We don't pay our players. And, and we try and promote the youth players through into the reserves, into the first team. And um, we've been pretty successful at that over the years, to be honest. Brilliant. Well, we really appreciate your time on the, the programme, Nigel. It sounds like you're on a good platform to continue to progress. Well, we certainly hope so. We're, we're going to do the best we can. We've got a bright young manager in place, uh, Adam Arnold. And, um, yeah, we, we just want to keep bringing young players through and giving them the opportunity to play and see where it takes us. Travel for beds, huts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello. This is my favourite roundabout. We're at Crescent Road, the home of Braintree Town, and we're playing Braintree Town Reserves. We played them earlier in the season in September when we were finding our feet in the league a little bit, and we lost 2-1 at home. I think we've got a strong side. Uh, it looks like everybody's available, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. In the absence of the regular first team manager, it was the job of assistant manager James Elliott and coach Aaron Tallermain to ensure that Wormley protect their 1-0 lead.
Mr. Sparrow, can you give us the can you give us the results from Norway, please? Three all. Shut up. Three nil down. We're three nil up. They came back with a win behind them. They came back three all. Fucking hell! I rolled up. Had the vets get on. Nil nil half time. One four nil. Boom. Four nil against Shearing. Good. Pleased to hear that. At this level of football, training nights consist of players and coaches giving up two or three evenings a week, often with players arriving straight from work to train for two hours trying to keep fit and sharp for the matches ahead. I stepped into the role uh, five games into the uh, last season, at the start of the last season. But if I'm honest, um, I didn't see managing beyond the season at all when I first took over. I only done it because there was uh, players here and I thought that it would help the club. I didn't look anything beyond the first the first season. The, the plan was, was uh, when we took over was to, to get the morale back up, uh, to get players that wanted to play for the club again. We managed to uh, go on a good run, an 11 game unbeaten run. Um, so the ambition was just to get it through to the end of the season. It, it was difficult because obviously me and Jay speak all the time about the, the team selection, training, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of dedication to it and you you live and breathe it, Jay will, will, will vouch for that, that, that you don't just walk away from it on a Saturday night, you pick it up again on a Sunday. I'd probably say 30-40% of my week is taken up by it. So it's, it is mentally draining in terms of how It's not the physical time that you're actually at the place, it's just the, the other side of it. We're going to do it on the deck now, so the ball's got to be moved on the deck. So we're knocking the ball back between us, everyone's got to touch it. That don't mean that you have four touches and then you pass it, right? So zip it, zip it, zip it, then when you want, you zip it into them and they've got to be dealing with it. Let's go! Go in, zip it in, move it around, zip it. Someone's got to make that decision when it's going. There we go! That's it! It's better to be on the deck, 
Chop, chop. Yeah, it's yeah. you like it. Come on in, zip it around, zip it, zip it. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, well done, Regan. Got to move, move about, move. Everyone's got to touch it. Zip, good. <laughs> Trying to keep the ball on the deck. So the idea is that if you're moving it nice and quickly between your own zone, you've got to think about it. Then someone's got to make that decision, like a final pass. And when it goes, and the idea is to obviously try and switch the other team. Henry for an example. We didn't start off very well, did it, with Berlin's uh, strike. <laughs> Young Liam in goal. He's 18, 19. 18, yeah. He's, 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 got a, he's got a good set of uh, shoulders on him. He's, he's intelligent. He's And, and he's, he's a confident lad. And it's very difficult at 18 being that confident. This weekend playing Ash State United, so me and Brandon just doing a bit of work on our own. A bit of um, all round training really, just getting ready for the weekend. We threw him in the deep end against uh, Harry, Harry, I believe, yeah. away. Yeah. And they, you know, he won us the game that game, didn't he? Unbelievable. Come in, come in, and I mean, Jesus, at the end they put pressure on us, and uh, he was making some unbelievable stops. And there we sort of stepped back and thought, yeah, we've got someone here. So Liam's definitely been a massive asset this season. session tonight, I could work out. It was a, a decent performance on Saturday for the first half, second half again, but there was a win was a major factor Saturday. But this week we're looking forward to it again. We know when we're at our best and, and we compete and play the way that we should do, that we can compete with anyone in the league. But we also know that if we're 60-70% on, on our game, that we're nowhere near good enough. So we, we know, we've got a game plan for Saturday, we know what we need to do, and it's all about attitude. Wembley's next outing is a home fixture against league leaders, Hashtag United. Well, it was a, a game of two halves really in uh, the first game. First half we struggled, they should have been uh, two or three nil up if I'm honest. Um, we're lucky to go in one nil down but I think we give them probably a little bit too much respect and um, didn't perform as we should do in the second half. We had a game plan, we changed it around um, and obviously it worked because we uh, deservedly won 3-1 in the end. Hashtag, in flying form, have only lost one home game all season. Their opponents? Wormley. Hashtag celebrating a mere three years of existence was founded by YouTuber Spencer Owen. The ball now running through, he's trying to create something out of nothing, he's got last three people. Hashtag sort of originally was a series idea for Spencer's YouTube channel, you know, which was to tell the story about us and our mates playing football and we thought an ideal challenge would be to see if we can come into the competitive world of football and, you know, see how we got on. Maybe you never know it back of your head, but we never thought we'd be, you know, looking for the title in our first season. We thought we'd see, could we just compete? Could we not get hammered every week? It took us four games to get our first win. And then the boys have just not looked back since then, really. The work that Devs has done with some of the new signings and some of the improvements our sort of original players have done has been amazing, really. You know, there is a certain number of employees for Hashtag United, people that run the content side of things. But then on the football side, every club, certainly at our level, has a load of heroes behind the scenes, you know, volunteers and what have you. Special people who give up their time to support the club, you know, on a voluntary basis. Um, you've got People like my dad, who's our physiotherapist, you know, comes, gives up his, his midweek evenings and his Saturdays to come and look after the boys for us. Just by going up into this level that we have to have railings put up that meet a certain standard, you have to have a stand, the floodlights have to meet requirements, so all of it is a, is a, is a big step, but it's being, it's being run and being controlled by the right people that know what they're doing. So I'm confident, and I'm sure Jay is, that, that the club is going in the right direction and with the, the right sort of help, we'll be able to, to put the, the stuff that we need into place to make sure we can sustain at this level. Just going through the set pieces. Majority of you should know your jobs already. Now it's a big, it's a big occasion, big games, you need to embrace them. But what you need, the main thing you need to do is do what we've done every time that we've won or been successful. And that's listen and carry out the instructions that we've asked. Yeah, Louis and Brad in there. Players if you're playing there too in midfield. You're good enough to do it, you've done it most of the season, so go out there and dominate that midfield. Obviously we need to support Mitch up there. I'll be honest with you, they're gonna try and kick the out of him. 
Yeah, so we need to make sure that around him we're clever. Yeah, so that we're talking to the ref. Yeah, we're making sure we're doing the right things. <coughs> Let's go out there, enjoy it, play as good as we can and as well as we know that we can. There's a lot of people watching out there, so go out there and do what we've asked you to do the majority of this season and we'll put in a decent performance. So, Listen, boys, you all know your f***ing jobs, no one's asked you now. Right, go out there and enjoy it, go and get free. Come on, everybody! When I was young, I used to go and watch my dad play, and sort of seeing him play, him enjoying it, my brothers, it got me excited and wanted to play myself. The main difference from coming from youth football at, at, at this same club to then playing for, for the men's side is the, the mixture in ages, I think. Um, so from here we've got people from 18 all the way to 40, like 41, Damien. But I think the team that we've got now, from the start of the season, it's changed completely, I think. We're all together now, we're getting results, and that's the main, when you're getting results, I think you're all together, you're fighting for each other, you're playing, yeah, fill apart, fill apart the team. Lewis King has been superb, but from the start of the season, um, we'll, we'll be honest, we was a little bit worried that he wouldn't be able to cut it at this level. He was playing left wing, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he was playing, he was playing left wing, left wing um, but he's been fantastic for the whole season. <laughs> Uh, there's plenty of people at the club. There is a slight issue. Obviously, we have an open side to the club, so they're not all paying fans, unfortunately. But um, now we've had a good gate. Hopefully, we'll get the right result. Wembley managed to hold on through a period of hashtag creating some dangerous chances. I would say that they was looking to get him sent off. Um, the ref played into it as well in terms of the way that he uh, like approached Joe, called our skipper over 60 yards. So basically he said in front of everybody, the next time that Mitchell does anything, he's getting a yellow card. So, rightly so, the hashtag defender, when he gets a little push, I'm not saying he overdone it, but he knows he's going to go down, so he goes down and he gets his yellow card. And then obviously the second incident, I think it was a little bit silly from Mitch myself. Um, but you know, if you go up with your arms in the penalty area, and it's a minute before the refs now are not lenient anymore. But I think the the ref got caught into the to the game and got caught into the the incident itself. But hashtag had a game plan. We have a game plan every week, and whether it's whichever way you do your game plan, that they knew if they wound Mitch up, and Mitch knew afterwards that. It would get sent off. Players with that level of ability and it's all in their game that you can't never take that away from them sort of players. He's, he's different gravy. He's, for me, he's the best striker around by a country mile. Um, so you, you you take the rough with the smooth. You know he's 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 won us uh, many other games, isn't he? Massively, yeah. And he, he's a massively important player. He, the, the whole atmosphere and everything when we're playing is completely different when he's here. He plays on the edge. We know that. But I'd rather have him here than not. <laughs> That's, 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 that's so busy. Hey, 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 hey,
You know, please stand the ten. We'll f***ing turn them over still. We'll f***ing everything they've had. We'll f***ing still in the game. That's it, mate. Edgar, wait, lads, we've got enough out wine. Martin and Dave, every time we get out of wine, we cause them f***ing problems. Just stay in the game. Stay in the f***ing game. Settle down, settle down, settle down. Relax. We've got to communicate to each other. Get in the right positions. When we've got the ball, give it to the man each time. Our passing has been pretty poor, to be honest. You know, it is a bit rushed. The, the atmosphere is obviously playing a part of it. But we do just have to try and play the way way that we can play. We've got good three centre midfielders in there. We should be trying to knock the ball around. We've got to, we've got to try and keep the ball, especially now we're down to ten men. The goal they scored was a delightful goal, we'd, we'd have been delighted with it ourselves. A um, little clip into the back post and the lads headed it across our keeper. But I think our lads really equipped themselves very well and arguably had the best chances of the second half. So we felt we could have got something from the game. It was a very even game. We had a lad sent off just before half time, which is never going to be easy when you're playing the potential champions. But they hung in there and won 1 0. But fair credit to them, I think they knew they'd been in the game. We had, I think, around about 300 people here on the day, um, which was fantastic for the club. Obviously, from our point of view, we'd like to see those people coming back again because um, it, it, it generated a real, uh, a real buzz around the place. United. Cobbleshaw United. They're sharing Cobbleshaw Town, apparently. Adam's away this weekend. He's on a stag do in uh, Barcelona. Uh, cheers, Dad. He's the first one of the season. Cheers, Dad. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, we do too. You ever been to Barcelona? So a couple of minutes with you. Um, see, Adam's away today, um, so me and Nick have jumped in. Um, all I ask from you is like I always ask from you, and I think you understand now what is expected from you, as you expect you to give 110 for us. Listen to what we've got to say, please. 
take it on board. Um, I do expect a performance from you. Um, I really, really want to get back onto winning ways. Uh, even though the performances haven't been too bad, uh, we're just not getting them wins at the moment. With a few games left to the end of the season, we we'll still need to get in that top ten to make it a successful season for the club. Go out there, you get us, you get me, you get all of us three points, all right? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Trading 1 0 at half time with some key players missing. Wormley had an uphill battle in the second half. With two goals in quick succession from Coggeshaw United, the afternoon was one to be quickly forgotten for Wormley. Despite getting themselves a late goal thanks to a strike from Benis Matoko. Behind the scenes, the backroom staff were called into a meeting to discuss the more pressing issues and tasks at hand. In terms of the, the bank, we're, we're looking, again, pretty healthy. If we can do another event, that would be, be a, a nice kickstart to the year. I, I think I'd be a lot more comfortable if that was yeah. the case, gaining a bit of yeah. um, capacity in, in, the, in the bank. Um, just to let you know, two jobs next year, as we've done by 31st of March 2020, is the technical area of this for eight persons will be placed by 31st March. Technical area. And the other one is the apparently the stand there is covered for 50 people standing, but the 50 seater stands, the 50 seat spot being placed by 31st March. Is that it? No other jobs? No. Okay, that's great. Right. 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 Hold on. Let's move this forward. So yeah. what, what's All your right. thinking? We're moving it forward. non-league in general, you get to really feel like you are part of the club, more so than any elite level of football can give you. You're not a customer, you are a proper supporter, you're there. All the players will be doing pictures and everything, stay around, having a drink in the clubhouse after. It is a proper, proper community thing.
back-to-back home games against Holland FC and Benfleet FC, Wormley put in two emphatic performances keeping two clean sheets and taking all six available points. I've said it to, to quite a few people, it's the, this is the only job that I would do in terms of football management. Finishing 10th place with 52 points, Wormley showed relentless persistence and integrity upon making the leap to tussle with bigger clubs, with bigger budgets and better facilities. An achievement that would not have been imaginable without the unconditional hard voluntary work from the committee, made up of locals who refused to witness the ever possible demise of a club that has seen almost 100 years of players and supporters come and go. The first thank you from me is to the committee of the club, all the volunteers that make this club happen. Because the club is moving in the right direction and it helps so much for all the players and management. They're taking nothing out of the club, they're taking no money out of the club, they're putting it in out of their own time and quite simply, the club doesn't happen without them. So a big thank you to everyone. That's a bit awkward. Um, one of the awards is called the Ron Reader Trophy. Now, most of you will not have a clue who Ron Reader is. And I've got to be honest, I don't really know who Ron Reader is. However, the Ron Reader Award always goes to somebody who has absolutely stepped up and gone above and beyond in terms of supporting the club. Um, now I know many of you will be thinking it's a bit awkward, this guy is probably a woman himself something. That's <laughs> not the case, unfortunately. And the winner of the Ron River Award this year is Brian Lowe. Yeah. Yeah. As the season draws to an end, the hard work continues along with the challenge of surviving and thriving. To see football stripped bare showing its core values in all their glory, supporting your local non-league football club goes a long way to helping future generations enjoy the most popular sport in the world. Yeah.